What is going on everyone, it's Justin here, and today I'm gonna talk about Google's newest phone that is about to come out, and that is the Pixel 4a. There are definitely a lot of leaks and rumors of this phone, and you can pretty much call it confirmed. So if you guys wanna see me do a review and possibly a giveaway as soon as this phone comes out, make sure you subscribe to the channel, drop a like on this video, and leave a comment down below as to what you expect to see. So nowadays, phones are very expensive still. You've got the Galaxy S20 Ultra at $1,400. You've got iPhones, folds, flips, folding this, folding that, curved screens, whatever it is. But there is still a very large market for budget phones and $399 seems to be like the magic price point for a good budget device that has a lot of the fundamental features and enough power for most at a very, very good price. So last year, Google released a Pixel 3a, and it was kind of an odd phone. Google had essentially released a phone that still captures the best of their flagship lineup, including the camera as well as the software experience, and the specs were good enough to suit the majority of consumers for everyday tasks, and from my own testing was able to even play some games such as Asphalt that did require a little bit more than average power in terms of graphics. So at the price of $399, it may have been very good for consumers, and I rated it one of the most underrated phones of 2019, but it was very similar to their flagship. But with the multi-camera setup of the Google Pixel 4 that came out late last year, it does create more separation to its own device with the budget version that is set to come out, and it's pretty much been fully leaked in terms of design as well as through some preview billboards. With the rumors of Apple returning with a budget device of the iPhone 9 or the SE2, whatever it's gonna be called, sometime this year and very much in the near future, at the same price of the Google Pixel A line and with the regular discounts of Google's flagship from 2019, the Pixel 4, will this model make much sense and being the first 5G device in Google's lineup, will it be enough to convince people to buy it? So just to sum things up, the Google Pixel 4 was a very good phone, and it had a lot of the things that you would expect out of a Google phone, great software, smooth experience, you also had motion gestures that were added, and they just tried to make a very smart phone that utilized Google's intelligence. From a hardware standpoint, it wasn't really anything flashy at all. It was a very solid feeling, comfortable to use phone, a soft touch finish on the side, you've got the squeeze functions, and the display also improved a lot on the previous generation, which was something that was a bit of an issue in the past for Google. The camera was still very, very good, and this year for the very first time he had a dual camera setup, but it did confuse a few people when Google decided to have the secondary camera a telephoto with the ability to zoom even further using AI, but I feel like an ultra-wide camera is just more useful. The Pixel 4a project has three nicknames though, with Sunfish being the 4G model and Project Redfin and Bramble being the 5G, with the Snapdragon 765 chip being the rumored one that is 5G compatible. That would essentially mean they're planning a 4a 4G, 5G, as well as a 4a XL with just the 5G model, but there is also rumors that Redfin is just a test platform with a Snapdragon 730 that is 4G compatible, and there isn't actually plans for retail release and instead just having 5G models. I think in 2020 that does make a lot of sense and Google traditionally has tried to keep their lineup very, very simple with just a few models and a few choices in terms of color and also configurations. When it comes to the display, there is a leaked hands-on of a Sunfish model that has a 5.81 inch 2340 by 1080 OLED screen. The bezel looks a lot like the iPhone XR but bigger and the hole punch on the left side looks a lot like the Samsung Galaxy S10e from the front. These designs have been floating around for quite a while now, and with the leaked billboard, it pretty much looks like it is going to be confirmed. A phone that has kind of a bezel that goes around the edge, as well as a hole punch on the left side, and with the camera being the only thing on the front as opposed to sensors on the top, it seems like this is not gonna have any motion gestures that we saw on the Pixel 4 and 4 XL, which worked very well, but it honestly wasn't something that I used that much. So when it comes to design on the back, it seems like it's going to be very similar to the current generation of the Pixel 4. You're going to find a square on the top left corner with a single camera setup, and you're also going to find a fingerprint sensor on the middle back. The Pixel 4 just has like a very nice soft touch finish, and the phone itself is supposed to come in white, black, as well as blue, and from the leaked images, I feel like the blue is going to look amazing. The phone is also said to have a 12 megapixel rear facing camera with 4K video and also electronic stabilization, as well as a 8 megapixel selfie camera on the front. According to Brandon from This Is Tech Today, he says that Google has been using the same sensors for a few years now, including the Sony IMX363. That is the same on the Pixel 3 to the Pixel 4, and it seems like the Pixel 4a is going to use that same Sony sensor. Google has definitely taken more of an Apple characteristic approach to their cameras while focusing on software and AI and also how it processes images, as opposed to going for like crazy hardware and high megapixels like we've seen from Samsung and Huawei. I believe similar to the 3A, the camera is gonna be exactly the same as what we find on the flagship, but it will just be a single camera setup. 
Another thing that is also going to remain is a headphone jack. And it seems like this year we're kind of nearing the point where we're seeing the last of headphone jacks and companies that have been doing them last year have started removing them. But the Pixel 4a is supposed to have a headphone jack and the battery is going to be 3080 milliamp hours. The leak model also shows 6 gigs of RAM paired with 64 gigs of storage and there will possibly be a 4 gig model as well for the base. The Google Pixel 3a was announced at Google I.O. last year, but with Google I.O. being canceled for this year, I think it's just going to be an online release. And apparently Google actually sold twice as many phones last year in the quarter that they announced the Pixel 3a. These budget phones really do have the potential to disrupt the market and they are less than half the price of some of the flagship devices within the same company. So if you just want to keep up with some of the new devices and don't need to spend over $1,400 on a phone, then I feel like the equilibrium right now for a very solid device that doesn't break the bank is around $399. The Pixel 3 ended up being an Android phone that I took out to a lot of places because at some events I do need to use an Android phone as opposed to an iPhone and being able to have a very light phone that may not have been made out of the best material but due to its plastic design is very light and comfortable it's just nice to carry in the second pocket if you're looking to get your kid like a first phone though this is also a great option but i guess for like business users if you need like a secondary device on a different platform this lineup just makes a lot of sense and you still have a great camera otherwise make sure you let me know what you think down below and subscribe to the channel and i'll see you all in the next one